Welcome everyone to the SoCal Car Scene Podcast, the exclusive place for coverage of car culture in Southern California and the personalities that drive it. I'm your host, Dean Marash. Please make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you never miss a show. Joining us today is Jason Scudelari, the former host of Motor Trends Week to Wicked. But first, we need to let you know that this podcast is brought to you by our good friends at SoCal Classic Car Storage and SeaTech. Also, we want to let you know about Patreon. We are now on Patreon, and Patreon is a great website that supports independent podcasts like the SoCal Car Scene by helping them with funding via subscriptions. If you're an avid listener of these podcasts, we humbly ask you to consider contributing three bucks a month for our show. That support will go a long way to providing you even better content through better equipment and crew. In exchange for your support, you'll have access to episodes one day before they premiere, and you'll get to see extended interviews from our guests like Jason. Sign up today at patreon.com forward slash the SoCal Car Scene or click on the link in the description. And without further ado, let me introduce to you our awesome guest, Jason Scudelari. Jason hosted the Motor Trend Show Week to Wicked, where they built killer cars in a week. That show may be over for him, but he still does it all. He's a car builder, a hot rodder, a social media influencer, whatever that is. No, I do know what that is. <laughs> product developer, and an incredible writer and photographer. Most recently, he joined the team at Classic Performance Products as the head of the research and development department. He also builds cars and takes pictures for in-the-garage media for classic truck performers, modern rotting, and all Chevy, why did I say Chevy? Chevy Performance. That's okay, I do it all the time. Okay, Chevy. In his personal life, he has built one-of-a-kind performance rides like a 69 F100, his wife's 1963 Nova, and the 1949 Chevy truck you'll see in this background. Jason, thanks so much for joining us on the SoCal car scene. Dean, thank you for having me. Oh, pleasure it's my pleasure. Here. We're so excited to have you, man. So I think we better start with that beautiful truck that's behind you, that 49 Chevy. Yep. What's the story on that bad boy? She's incredible. Um, I think I picked that up when I was 18. So I've had that truck longer than any other hot rod I've ever had um, and built. So. It started out as a street rod build, um, bright colors, uh, <laughs> you know, that kind of 90s theme with everything painted, nice. no chrome whatsoever. And uh, shortly after almost finishing the truck, ran out of money. Um, <laughs> so I went out and picked up a 55 First Series GMC pickup. Um, and during that time, I kind of transitioned from that street rodder kid to more of a rockabilly scene kind of you know really started getting into the older music um even the newer stuff that the rockabillies were playing and started you know going to a lot of those car meets and car shows yeah. and obviously i couldn't drive a truck that i had built kind of in the 90s style fashion of street rod right um so the 55 became my first real build you know with the you know white walls back then you know everybody had red steel wheels flat black uh, paint lowered um in lowered in the worst way possible. So is this the afford. 80s or 90s? What what do you 90s, know? 90s. Yeah, okay. 90s. Um, mid 90s, I would say. Um, so graduated high school in 92, turned 18. So yeah, 93. Um, when all this was happening, I started the the, the other truck shortly before that. Um, but just you know, I didn't have money. So the 55 was already running when I picked it up. And like I said, I lowered that thing in the worst way possible, uh, just to get it down, whatever I could do. Yeah. Uh, put some really bad airbags I found on it. It rode like shit. Uh, looking back at it, it kind of looked like shit. But you know what? I was proud of it. Yeah, yeah I bet and you're I really proud. And I drove that thing everywhere. And uh, that kind of started, you know, a, a fashion that I really still enjoy today in styling of the 50s and 60s customs. Um, I love lowriders, um, but I love pro touring stuff too, which you know. I can talk about you know later in the show. So when I look, I look at that truck, there's a couple of things that are unique about it, right? For me, obviously, it's missing something that normally covers the engine. Yeah. And also, the the, the top of that car has got some bling on it. Yep. Um, and again, like I mentioned to you when we were having a conversation before we started the podcast, I've seen that a lot on a lot of low riders. Sure. So I don't know if that influenced you, but talk about a couple of key features like that about your truck. Yeah, you know, jumping back real quick to the 55 First Series, um, on our way out to see a Brian Setzer concert in Hollywood, going down the 101 freeway, <laughs> completely lost the truck to electrical fire. Oh man. Um, doing 70, 70 down the freeway, the car s starts the fire in, in the cab underneath the dash. Wow. Um, completely 
my fault. I thought fuses were stupid. <laughs> um, could have been prevented. It was not. I was young, so please don't judge me. Um, <laughs> lost the truck to a fire and it took me about a month to go look at the truck again. I broke my heart. Um, wow. I had it towed to my parents' house at the time and started thinking a lot and said, hey, you know, one, I got to become a better builder if I want to yeah. keep doing this. And two, I can't be afraid of things that I really want to do that I am scared of right now. And back then it was, you know, I was just getting my hands dirty, fabricating and stuff. I had a cheap little uh, bin pack welder that I got from Home Depot. No, not even, it was all flux core. We didn't have gas on it, but hey, I was proud of it. Um, so I had this truck stored at my parents' house also, or it might've been at my other house, I can't remember. Either way, it wasn't chopped. And I said, you know what, I don't care. I just lost the truck to a fire. I'm doing exactly what I want to this truck. And the whole bar cut the let roof it rip. off and s took six inches out of the A and B pillars and went to set the top back on and realized that does not fit at all. <laughs> um, so I made a complete cut all the way down the top of it and kind of got it to fit. But to do it right, I had to cut it in fours. And I learned a lot. Uh, <laughs> I, I, I will say that uh, one of my buddies, Joe Ray, long time editor of Lowrider Magazine and the founder of Lifestyles Car Club, uh, had a body filler gauge. Um, people call them Bono gauges. And what it does, it, 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 it can sense the metal underneath the filler. Yeah. So I thought I'd run it across the top of this to see how much filler I did use. And I was actually impressed. There was about a 16th of filler in the deepest areas. And for someone that chopped you know, their first, first car, I, I, I thought that was OK. And well, I never went back to fix any of that. I left the same. Um, it's been through a lot of different styles, a lot of primer. But you know, today it sits how it does, and it's done. And I'm proud to say that I love it. It's a great truck. Do people admire the fact you don't have a hood on that? I mean, it really looks quite right because of all the styling of on top of the grill, on the firewall. You know, you've even got some fasteners that are showing. Sure. And I, I just feel like it makes me wonder why aren't more people doing that? But yeah. you know, maybe maybe it's not so obvious to do that either. I think it's okay to do with more of the 50, 60 style custom that this is. Yeah. Um, and when I, I used custom very loosely, right. because there's nothing traditional about this truck. Um, so when I say custom, that means I can do whatever I want to it and still kind of keep a styling factor that I want. Right. And the, the whole no hood on there kind of was not by design. I really got carried away and started getting stuff painted. And by the time it was ready to fit the hood, it was too nice to put on there and scratch <laughs> up. And I knew there was going to be a shit ton of work needed to get yeah. that hood to fit properly. Yeah. Um, so I just finished off the engine bay really neat and had my buddy Jeff Styles come out pin do some Stiles. pinstriping. Oh, yeah, real good know. buddy. Yeah. So he did all the pinstriping on the truck. And uh, I, I, when the truck used to be in primer, I used to, it didn't matter how old or young they were, they'd say, when are you going to finish the truck? I have not gotten that since it's been done this way. No one said, hey, there's no hood. It's not finished. So. I think I'm okay. <laughs> well, we love it. Absolutely love it. It's the last of the three cars that I haven't seen now. Yeah. I think I've seen three of your builds. So we'll talk more about your builds. But sure. recently you joined uh, Class Performance Products or CPP. Um, and that sounds like a great opportunity for you to drive the develop, development of product design. And I, my guess is that, you know, in these, you know, all these builds that you've been working on, you envision certain you know new, new ways to go about accomplishing sure. uh, things that you know have been done a long time so i bet you're just kind of jones in to reimagine products or systems in cars uh to be better performing or maybe better um, from a per, uh, design perspective um des designing for sure um i feel i have a pretty good eye on what flows and looks looks right in 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 kind of for someone to look at and doesn't go, why is that out of place? Why does that look like that? I think I, I fit that mold pretty well. Um, you know, real quick, Jim Reese, the owner of Classic Performance Products, CPP, what everyone knows it as, uh, I've known him for 15 plus years. Wow. Um, I've done a ton of Week to Wickets. They have been presenting and title sponsors on a lot of the Week to Wickets. So I've worked with them very closely. And, you know, we, we've talked a lot over the years. And, uh, you know, obviously I was at Motor Trend and it, the fit was right and the move was right. And uh, yeah, I couldn't be happier. It's a great team and you know, Jim's a genius when it comes to business. Um, they got some real key players over there. They've, they've had the, uh, a long relationship with the engineer, Danny Nix, that's over there who is really smart, um, designs a lot of their, their, their key components on their suspension and brakes and you know, 
everything else around. How there. awesome is it to be able to have an opportunity to get all that stuff that's in your head out and work with designers or, you know, people that are actually going to produce product. I mean, and, and then, you know, to kind of push the envelope, it's going to push you too. Sure. I'm sure it's going to make you uncomfortable because you're dealing with a big company now. You're not right. dealing with just, hey, how do I do this on my vehicle? Right. You got to be thinking about how do I make it commercially viable? Yeah. And that's one thing I've always stressed, especially hosting the week wicked is, you know, one key thing that I've always pointed out during that show is, hey, we're not doing anything crazy. This is not brain surgery. We are bolting parts on a car. And that was what that whole program was based around was bolting parts on cars, making the consumer, the guy out there in his garage, feel comfortable enough that he can go buy the same parts that we're putting on this, whatever it was, our last build was a 67 Nova. They can do it too. And I have that same approach working at CVP is going in there and saying, hey, I want to make sure the guy, wherever he is in the Midwest, you know, on the East Coast, yeah. Who, who's waited some time, saved up some money, and has bought a suspension package from us to be able to put that on his car in a weekend and not go, I don't understand it. This doesn't fit properly. They said this would fit like this. I don't want that. So that's another key role that I'm coming into. You know, For, for example, second gen Camaros, I, we got in there. They made some new lower shock brackets to relocate coilovers. And the angles were just way off, like 16 degrees off. And that was the first thing I went in there. And you know, we switched some stuff up. I got with Danny Nix. Uh, told him where the issue was. We designed some new brackets. I mean, he designed the new brackets. I told him where, what, what, what we needed. Um, we had them laser cut it out there. Uh, I threw them on there and boom, they fit perfect. And that's what I want anyone who's buying a part from CPP to have that same experience. Well, we've all been there, right? Well, we, uh, we're restoring something, whether it's my 67 Cougar or my 55 Fairline, or sure. I've got you know too many cars to mention, but you get these aftermarket parts and, you know, like mirrors, they never seem to work properly. Oh, just was one example. Or, you know, you think you're buying a, a, a simple window mechanism, doesn't work properly. Right. So it's so maddening, you know, for people to buy aftermarket stuff that doesn't work right. or doesn't, you know, meet expectations. So I'm glad that's your focus because it's, it's a lot more than looking pretty, right? It's, Absolutely. It's doing, it's doing, you know, we always take for granted the production uh, line and all that goes into uh, making a car like that or like that. It's just right. I honest. mean, we're working on cars that, you know, a GM or a Ford, whoever it may be, who have millions of dollars in research and development. Yeah. And now we've got the aftermarket coming in there who don't have that in Great point. R and D that are making parts that are supposed to replace the ones that are on your car, you know, whether it be to lower your car, make it perform better, but they better fit the same way. Yeah. And I think there's a lot of good companies out there that are doing that. Um, and there's some that aren't. So, and believe, I've worked with all of them. And, you know, it's just you want things to work, so, especially if you, you it's hard earned money you're throwing at these parts. So a lot of people that are watching the show or listening probably know you from week to wicked, if I had to guess. Um, and so you become this, you know, pseudo personality or TV star, whatever you want to call it. Um, you know, what's the craziest build or thing that you did on that show? I mean, it's it's crazy enough to think about making a car in a week. So we all kind of get that. We're like, we can't even fit that in our brain. So right. we're not sure we understand how you guys do that, but is there something that really sticks in your mind? Like, I don't know how we did that. Um, there's a few, uh, and you know, when we're building a full car, the car comes in painted. We get the car beforehand. Yeah. We have the body work and paint done. Okay. Like I said, we want to we want to aim towards the person who's probably going to do this real life in the garage. Um, but there are two builds. One was a, a '60s Bronco that was 100% aftermarket, sheet metal and all. No, it yeah. came to us completely as a bare shell day one. Um, we had the right team. These are the guys that were over on the four-wheel inside of, of Motor Trend and some of their buddies who came in that we, we freelanced to get in there to help us with that build. And by Friday afternoon, we finished it. Um, just how that thing started from start to finish was huge. And then the 55 Chevy that Wait. we did with CPP also. So what was so unique about it, that it went well and that you had the right team and that it just seemed to be amazing? I don't know anything about Broncos. I've oh. never built a Bronco. Um, <laughs> yeah. I've never even driven that Euro Bronco up to that point. Yeah. And there's a lot of, un e even some of the key guys in there that know them, there's a lot of parts that aren't made for that thing yet. And this was a 100% aftermarket car. It didn't come in with any parts. It didn't come in with hood hinges. Um, two days before the build, we almost went out and bought a donor at $25,000 expense. So we had those parts in the parking lot Just if needed. Yeah. Um, we didn't, we finished it. So. We had the right people in the right place for that build. I was just, I was nervous, <laughs> to say the least. So tell us about this 55 you mentioned. 55, same thing, 100% aftermarket Chevy. body. Uh -huh. Yep. 
um, all aftermarket came in as a shell. In fact, both of those cars were delivered at the same time. The same painter painted both of them. Both delivered to me at the same time on, on dollies. So just shells. Um, that one took one extra day, but we did everything from power windows. I mean, we had a, that was the first and only car I think we ever did with a full interior. TMI came in and did a full interior on that. Uh, so it just, it was a lot of work. Um, again, it was all a lot of bolt-on parts. Some of these, when you get that far into it, there's fabrication involved to make things fit. Yeah. No fault of any advertiser out there. Just it, we're working with an aftermarket body to start with, and we're working with other aftermarket components that may want to fit a original 55 a little better. Right. So I mean, nothing big, nothing that I don't think anyone can't handle. It was just a lot. Time. 16-hour days for yeah. five days. Yeah. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. Did you have one build? that you particularly felt like was your personal favorite coming out of there, like yeah. regardless of whether it was hard or, or relatively sane? I, funny enough, um, my wife's a huge Nova person. I, I like them. I, I, I think I would probably do a first-gen Camaro if I was doing a pro touring car personally. Um, but a 67 Gasser Nova we did for Speedway Motors was about one of the funnest. It was the most simplest Gasser style, big block Chevy, just open headers the thing was just i mean bad to bone and then the last one we just did with cpp it was another 67 nova more of a pro touring build mm -hmm. it just went together right it went together like it should have um it wasn't crazy hours um the, the hardest part about that whole thing is we had to hire a COVID officer to come in and monitor us no kidding and yeah being with a motor trend officer. and seven people <laughs> in the entire 10,000 square foot building at a time no more mask on at all times wow. the first two days we had one of the guys the COVID officer Good guy, but I'm just glad he wasn't there for the rest of the week. Uh, during our openers, I take my mask off, and usually I opened up with someone else, and he brought a ruler to make sure we were six feet apart. Ah. <laughs> Which we were uh, at least 10 feet apart, and I could tell that, but hey. I don't know where to get a COVID officer, so I, I got a couple of numbers think, if you need Okay, one. thank you for that. <laughs> um, so let's talk about your builds. Yeah. Okay, you know, I'm going to put it in my words, and, you know, they're very naive or simplistic, but here's what I see. I've seen three of them now. And there's a simplicity in the design from the five or 10 foot perspective, like your wife's Nova. You look at that Nova and you say, well, you know, it's a nice Nova. And then it reveals itself the closer you get. Uh, you know, whether you're looking in the interior mm -hmm. or whether you're looking underneath, or whether you're looking in the engine compartment. And it began, you begin to see the incredible work in the design and the elegance and more on the performance side, not not as much on the aesthetics, but there is simplicity. Like the little holes you put in the hood sure. uh, of that Nova, that's one example. It's like everybody talks about those when they see that car. So how would you characterize your style? I mean, I've done a bad job, but. No, well, I appreciate the compliments. I take all that as compliments. Um, my styling is, it, it's as simple as saying clean and simple. I want clean my cars, simple. when you come up to them, to look clean and simply built. I promise you they're not easily built. Um, there's no simplicity to my builds, um, but that's the look I'm going for. And when I say that, it's you're not going to see any wires anywhere. If you're going to see any brake lines, everything's going to be bent the same direction. They're going to follow each other. Um, and that's from down the firewall all the way out the back. You can put any of our cars up on the lifts, and they look as simple and clean underneath as they do on top. Yeah, so that's the work, to yeah. get them to be that simplicity or the, you know, the, the, the perfection of. I, that's what I'm calling it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, like I said, it's not easy because all, I mean, the two pro touring cars, my F100 and my wife's car, both I started out with shells and cut the firewalls out. Uh, the trucks got the firewall set back 11 inches to push the motor back for weight transfer. And the Nova, again, too, it's, it may be only three inches, but it got me a perfect 50-50 balance. But yeah, I cut the whole firewall out, set everything back, ham fab everything and started there. Um, I mean, her car is fun to drive and my truck, you know, it's no slouch. I, I build everything to drive the shit out of. And yeah. I do, I, I'm not afraid to get into the throttle and, and spin the tires or hit the rev limiter or, or you know, and my wife's car I did 160 down the back stretch at Fontana um, wow. during a super Chevy challenge that we held. And I blew through the first turn, but I got up to about 160. So when I look at your cars, I at least with those two, I see pro touring, Absolutely. but I think they're more, more than pro touring. They're really ready to go out and hit the track and compete. For sure. um, you know, so I, I think, 
you know, SEC, SEC or any other competitive format, yep. I think those vehicles could probably uh, hold their own against some of the best builds, if my, I had to guess. Yeah, my wife's car's done very well. Uh, LS Fest in Vegas, we were within, we were in the same second as the top runners. Okay. Um, and these guys, I've, I've raced along the side of them for quite some time. They are, these guys do it all the time. They're awesome. They have some of the best looking, baddest builds for the track out there. And a lot of them have that same approach as I do. They'll drive into the track with the AC on. And when they get there, turn the AC off, drive the shit out of the car all weekend and then drive it home. Um, I don't do that anymore. I put it on the trailer. Because <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to know what time of year it is. Yeah. It gets hot, and um, I'd like to drive home in comfort with the car on the back. And you know, Stress I do out. drive them hard. I I I, get, I break them. Yeah. I'm not afraid to break them. I'll fix them. But hey, that's that's the name of the game. Is you know, build them to drive them. Well, I think you've done a great job of that. And you know what keeps the cars charged around here is our good friends at SeaTech. Are you looking for a smarter way to charge your car's battery? Our friends at SeaTech lead the way in care and maintenance of vehicle batteries. SeaTech's unparalleled knowledge and continuous investment in innovation means they offer high quality, reliable chargers that are effective, easy to use, and most importantly, safe for the user and their car's electric system. The quality of SeaTech's products make them the trusted company of the world's most recognizable car brands, including Audi, Bentley, BMW, Corvette, Ford, Ferrari, Maserati, Mercedes, Porsche, and numerous others. Get yours today at SmarterCharger.com. So how long have you been involved with magazines and digital publications and producing content? I guess you're a content producer, really, if one thinks about it, right? I mean, building cars is kind of content, right? Sure. Um, so what, what? I'm going to throw this out there real quick. I don't write. You don't want me writing. Oh, really? Okay. No, um, okay. I've, I've done a little bit of writing, especially in the last seven or eight months for Motor Trend. Um, I don't, that's not my thing. My thing is doing the installs. I can do, shoot my own photography. Um, but yeah, so starting back in Motor Trend 19 years ago is when I was hired. I mean, magazines were booming. Uh, we had a lot of them. Uh, and that was my thing, was, was you know working for, whether it be rod and custom, custom rod or street rod or classic trucks, custom classic trucks, Chevy High, Super Chevy, to name a few. I would do a lot of their tech, um, anything from suspension to, to drivetrain to full builds, step by step. Um, my two bill, actually all three of my builds that I currently have were all published and uh, documented through, this was that class truck magazine from day one all the way through from the Art Morrison chassis all the way to where it sits now. So it's almost like these are how to, you know, books, if you will, you know, sure. if you want to, you know, be like Jason, not that it's quite that simple. <laughs> but um, so, you know, but as we know, these publications have now, a lot of them have gone digital. Some of them have gone away. We've yeah. seen, we've seen, a, a, you know, the COVID-19 has had a, a significant impact. But is there still a strong demand for these publications, like the three that you're currently working on, for example? Advertising's there and the quality and the, the writers are there. It, it's unfortunate, you know, Motor Trend got rid of uh, 19 out of 21 magazines wow. in the last year, and for numerous reasons, I don't. I'm not playing the politic game. Motor Trend, I have nothing bad to say. They employed me for a lot of years. I love the guys over there. Great shows. Yeah, yeah but Great you know, time. again, I, it was my time to leave. And Tim Foss, who hired me 19 years ago at Motor Trend, I'm now working for him again too, doing stuff on his three titles: uh, Classic Truck Performers, uh, Modern Rotting, and All Chevy Performance. Um, doing the same thing and. They've got a lot of the staff from Motor Trend who were either let go or, or had left on their own right. as editors. So all these people that are now writing for Tim, um, producing content for these new magazines, have, were at Motor Trend. They're the best of the best. We had our pickings to go through to get the best writers, um, the best photographers. We sure. still have a lot of good freelancers out there. So yeah, we're, and the, the quality of the magazines, you know, they've only been out for a few months, but the quality is thick paper, bright, bold colors. Whatever color your car looks like in real life, it's going to look like in the magazine. It's, you know, you don't got this paper you can see through or see the ad through, you know, the feature wow. into the into the next page where you see ad coming through. So, yeah, it, it, it's a quality magazine. I'm proud to work there. And all three starting at the first of the year will all be monthly magazines. Well, it seems like both these areas that you're doing your current work in are very complimentary, right? 
this, you, you know, you love to work with your hands, you love to build, you love to imagine, sure. and it seems like these two pieces come together nicely for you. And uh, it, it it was a slam dunk for me, yeah. um, being offered the position over CPP and then helping out with some magazine stuff. It it was a no brainer for me. I'm back with the family, I'm back with Good the team, you. and I, it's where I'm comfortable. Yeah. Hey, so I want to switch gears a little bit. I'm looking at your shirt, kind of laughing, like. So we've had. Um, we started our podcast in, I think, about October of last year, mm -hmm. November. And then at some point in March, the world got weird, right? A little so, bit, and to say the least. For car people, the, we all freaked out. You know, we got depressed. We were told we couldn't go to our car shows. We were watching our car shows drop left and right. Gosh. We're down the crapper. And there was a collective groan on social media. You know, did you hear that SEMA got canceled? Did you hear that Cruising for a Cure got canceled? And we were just like, oh. You know, so I think we were all kind of needing group counseling, car group counseling. But while the rest of us were kind of whining and bitching and complaining and, you know, trying to find a group, you were busy cooking up quarantine cruises with can at can and a couple, uh, you know, yourself. And I can't remember. There's probably one other principal. Uh, uh, is it the other can? Yeah, to... to, to, to I've, I've told the story many times. I can so, say it quick. So we were busy being depressed and sad, and you guys were solving the problem. Listen, I was still depressed and sad and, oh, okay. and paranoid <laughs> and scared. Um, but after about a month sitting in my house, you know, we were all, uh, you know, working from home. I, I got with my buddy Heck, and yeah. I said, hey, let's just Heck. take the trucks out and let's go for a spin. He's all right. We did that for a couple weekends, and one weekend we're downtown Huntington Beach on Main Street. We get out of our car, and a very energetic guy at the name of, Patrick with Keystone came out and said, start taking pictures of our cars. We all started talking. And, you know, I mentioned to, to uh, heck, hey, we should post this on our pages, social media pages, and see if we can get a couple more cars out next week. Patrick's all like, hey, would you mind if I join? Absolutely. Well, we didn't realize he has quite a few followers. Um, so our very first official cruise was the following Sunday, and it held about 33 people. A little rainy out, but I went, geez, we got 33 people from three. This is awesome. Um, so we did it again the following Sunday, and we got 102 cars, 103 cars out there. I went, oh, that grew quickly. Um, and now Patrick calls up Ken and says, hey, you got to get out here. <laughs> and I'm like, who's Ken? He said, no. It's, well, Ken said, nah, not, nah, I'm, not, I'm good. I'm not coming down. He lives up in the high desert. The next one, we had 500 cars. Ken said, hey, you know what? I'm going to go out there and check this out on the next one. Let's see what's going um, on. Well, come to find out, Ken is a huge influencer social media, has one of the biggest muscle car pages in the world. Comes out to our next one. We have 1,500 cars in a mall parking lot. He looks around and goes, wow. Um, he, was that he, the one in Westminster Mall? Yes, it was. Yeah. Okay. And Ken became, and maybe Ken started the one before that. I can't remember. Um, but he became our fourth partner. And to this day, now we're pulling in over 2,000 cars um, once a month for our cruises. And, man, it's awesome. We hope to call it soon from quarantine cruise to cruise and PCH, which we have an Instagram page, cruise and PCH with a Q. Um, check it out. It gives you all the details on our cruises coming up and uh, shameless plug, but yeah. So congratulations. Uh, we, we've talked about this on a number of podcasts that COVID is um, the mother invention. You know, it creates necessity. Car people can't be trapped at home with wives and kids and the usual trappings. Uh, I don't think that's healthy for anybody. I, no, but you know, we, <laughs> no offense we, to anyone. There, there is a, there's a thing there that, you know, you've got to get out in your car. I remember right after it happened, I had some people pull up in their Mustang. And I'm like, well, I, they rolled down their window. They didn't want to get out of their car. They yeah. had masks on. I said, hey, what's going on? Husband, wife, what's in the back seat? They had their birds. They were taking their birds in the cages out for a ride in their 66 Mustang. <laughs> totally that. People were already getting cooped up in March, you yeah. know. So the car community really, really needs, um, you know, to continue on. Yeah. And, and do something. So congratulations. It's very innovative. Super excited in this community. Um, so it also shows the power of social media. And you mentioned Ken Johnson. Yeah. And, and, you know, he's a monster at this as far as an influencer is concerned. Do you think this show would have gotten to this point without the power of social media? 100% no. Um, Heck and I would have still been, we, we may be up to about 20 cars by now. Wow. If it was just uh, Heck and I, you know, Heck's got a good following. I got a decent following. Um, no, we, I mean, in realist, realistically, we, we might have a hundred cars, um, but we'd burn that out. We, we, with Patrick and Patrick brings such a good 
marketing aspect to the team, um, going out getting these parking lots. You know, we are now 100% licensed and insured. We what we're doing is completely legal. Where <laughs> the the first 90% of our runs were hey, secret. meet it's us here, meet us here, and let's see what we get away with. And I would the night before would be sleepless nights because I knew we were expecting over a thousand cars easily, and it was just who was going to jail first. Which yeah. one of us four was yeah. going to hit Who's the sale? Yeah. yeah, because someone was going to have to own up to it. Um, I think Heck took the fall and said, I'll, I'll, I'll raise my hand. He's a tattoo artist. I can, I can take some time off work. I'm okay. Um, I think we all had a little more time. He's a cool cat, man. He is. He's a he's great one guy. Cool he's guy. one of my best friends. Yeah. Um, most of my work is done by him. Uh, I'm sure. It's all bar part of the bartering deal. I, I, uh, I built him a 64 Chevy pickup, and in return, I get tattooed. So, um, Not a bad deal. It isn't, but I, I found the older I got, the, the worse they hurt, and <laughs> I could I could have a lot more to this point. But it's like every time I get reminded about once a month when I go get another one. Yeah. That's why I didn't get one last week or the week before. So yeah. So what are the chances we're going to see quarantine cruises somewhere else in Southern California? They already are. Um, um, have, are you guys multiplying? Are, are... Well, no, it's not a well. We are not the inventor of the cruise, and I don't want anyone to think, no, I know, think we are. But, you but know, I mean, the Quarantine Cruise, we are the original Quarantine Cruise. You are. And there, there's another one um, somewhere else that's being called the Quarantine Cruise. It has nothing to do with us. Um, and I, that was always my thing. It was like I was really nervous at the beginning. Like, hey, guys, should we, should we license us? Should we do something more so this is ours? And <laughs> Ken and Patrick looked at me and said, hey, people can't do what we do. Great point. We just, we got this. And I mean, 100%, these guys are animals. And yeah, I'm, I'm proud to be part of this. You know, I, I, Keck and I didn't invent the cruise. We just decided to get out of the house, get off our butts and go out and cruise during a time when people were staying home. Um, and we did, we did it cars apart. So we were plenty, plenty, you know, we had that six foot <clears throat> distance quarantine. Cars are we socially safe. distant, no Absolutely. problem. Well. The cars here in SoCal Classic Car Storage are also socially distant, as you can see. Uh, SoCal Classic Car Storage is also one of our sponsors. These facilities that are here that we're having this podcast in are the lovely city of Laguna Hills. And we offer secure white glove vehicle storage, extensive concierge services, and other things. But in addition to storage, our expert sales staff offers consignment services for those looking for help to sell their cars. For more information, visit us in Laguna Hills and find us at SoCalCarStorage.com or Facebook.com forward slash SoCalCarStorage. All right, Jason, cruise number eight's coming up. Yep. Next weekend on a Sunday, right? So are we at a point where you can share the start point and the destination <laughs> or is it all that, you know, super secret and we got to wait, you know, wait a minute, I think somebody, you got to get a text message to find this stuff out. I'm blowing it. What's the story? Yep, text text crews to 21,000. You can, uh, if you don't have Instagram or you just don't bother looking at the social media sites, texting uh, crews to 21,000. We'll give you all the information of the cruises. Text at one time. That's all you need. It doesn't cost any money. And every time we have an update of anything involving the cruise, it'll be text to you um, free of charge. Uh, yeah, so 27th is our next one, this upcoming next Sunday. And... I can tell you our ending destination. That'd be good. It's going to be the same spot as it always is. Newland Center. and Newland Center, be? yeah. Um, Newland Center has been awesome to us. We partnered up with them, and they're, they're, they're another partner of ours. Who, oh, they are? Yeah, okay, and they have, they have locations all over California, which we're welcome to use. Um, I would tell you where our starting spot is, but we don't usually release that until Friday, but we don't know. Okay, fair enough. Um, the one we had we kind of maybe fell through a little bit, uh, but we will have one. Um, it, the cruise won't be canceled. We'll, we'll find something. I'm sure it's going to make it happen. Yeah. If you guys haven't been, it's pretty awesome. I was at the last one. I plan to be at eight. So we'll see all of you there. It's required that you attend. Um, it's in my imagination or the caliber of the cars at these cruises quite a bit different than car, traditional car shows. So I go to Carson Coffee and I'm, I, you know, I make the rounds around here and I go to the small local car shows. But what I don't see there is heavily modified custom one-off builds, sure. right? Like, like your truck. Now, granted, not everybody is capable of doing what you've done here or with your other cars. But, it, you know, there's some cars that are, you know, incredible builds rolling in. So Absolutely. how are you attracting, um, you know, the, how are you target marketing, if you will, the, this type of clientele? I think... 
from the beginning, we have not discriminated towards any one type of car. Right. So we have everything from your, your typical hot rod to your custom, to your off-road truck, to your lowered slam trucks every year. Um, one thing we always say, bring it if it's custom. Um, that, I mean, that can be as simple as being lowered in your newer car. Right. You're proud to show it off, bring it down. We don't, we don't care. We like to see everybody happy. And I think that's what's bringing such a huge audience that don't even own cars to all these is because there's something there for everyone. Right. And we also got the guys that are, you know, in their backyard, you know, on a tight budget, you know, building their car week by week and then bringing it back out and then adding to it the following week to, you know, cars that are in the millions of dollars to custom hand built one off cars. We have everything in between. So that's one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about. I'm seeing a lot more garage type builds mm -hmm. that are blowing people's minds. Yeah. Like, the, you know, the kid with that 69 Camaro at Cruising 7, I was like, what the heck? that green Camaro. And I'm like, uh, well, of course, we got one here with Chris, yeah. our customer here at SoCal Classic Car Storage, an amazing car. But some of these cars are not built in big facilities by, sure. you know, the best of the best mechanics and the best of the best name brand shop. These are guys that are doing this stuff at home. And I'm sure you've done a lot of that type of work yourself. Absolutely. And so is there is there kind of a renaissance of this thing where people have turned their garages and are learning the skills where before we always used to say, yeah, we better turn this over to the, the pros that know how to cut and weld and, and use 3D stuff or, you know, what's what's happening? I don't know if it, if I don't know if the shows have, have made people feel more comfortable doing their own thing, saying, yeah. hey, look, we're doing this, you know, whether it be in a junkyard for, our, for a reality show or someone yeah. doing it in their garage. I don't know, but it's bringing a lot of talent out. And there's a lot of guys that are really good at it that don't do this full time. Yeah. Um, I can relate to it because before I was at Motor Trend, I was that guy. Yeah. I didn't have sponsorship helping me out to build these high dollar cars. Right. I was pulling money out of my pocket that I was working hard for and, and doing it my own way or making stuff. Most of the stuff I made because it was cheaper. I could go down to the metal store and fabricate a bracket or whatever I needed yeah. to, to, to hold something on my, my hot rod. So I relate to these people a lot better than I relate to these higher end builders. Yeah. Although I've been with all of them and I'm building a lot of these high end cars. I mean, that guy that in his garage, you got to appreciate him. He, he, he you know, He's doing stuff with the minimal amount of tools and, and machinery and just coming out with these beautiful, high quality builds. And even the ones that aren't super high end, they're clean, they're nice, and they're done right. And I think that's where some of the imagination is too, where they may not be as clean or maybe as finished as some of these, you know, Dave Kendig, sure. incredible cars. I mean, he builds a gorgeous car, don't get me wrong. But, you know, the imagination is pretty unlimited for a guy that doesn't have all that experience because he's not bound by what he knows. Do you know what I mean? Right. It, it can be a gating factor. I think too what's really opened up for the guy in his garage is the aftermarket. Oh yeah, great point. The aftermarket makes, you got yourself a first, second, third gen Camaro, you got yourself a you know, Chevy pickup C10. There is 25 companies out there that build parts for that car uh, in the same category. Yeah. Hundreds that build parts for that car all around, but just the same category. So you can go out and buy a classic performance part or you can go out and buy a Detroit Speed part. Um, they both are gonna give you that same stance. One may be a little bit more performance for a truck. Another one may be more relatable to the guy in his garage building right. on a budget. I think that has opened this up to a lot of these people. They can bolt these parts on, especially with YouTube. You can go to YouTube and figure out how to take anything apart and put it back together and fix it properly. Yeah. So I think, I just think the reach out there of getting these parts, buying these parts, and being able to put these on has made Great a lot point. of people feel more comfortable. Yeah, and I think it's a confluence of all of the above, right? The how-to stuff, the quality of that stuff, YouTube showing people how to do sure. everything, uh, parts that are available, complete bodies, com all Absolutely. the parts on, you know, like you build a, a couple of Novas. I mean, you can probably buy every part you need on a Nova. I've Easily. got a 57 T-Bird up there, yeah. Larry's T-Bird, and another T-Bird shop, you can buy every part for that car almost. Yeah. So it it makes all of this available and we've got a rust bucket or something, you know, we can we can survive, we can get through it, right? Bottom Absolutely. line. Absolutely. We can um, get, we and can a lot get. of people are getting more comfortable just like, you know, if you got a body that, that needs some quarter panels or something, people are in the garage welding some quarter panels on now because <laughs> there's so many instructional, right? you know, videos or even print, you know, magazine stuff that are showing you step-by-step -step how to do it. Yeah. Um, so you see guys doing TIG welding and yeah. MIG welding and stuff like it's, that. And, you know, they're not pros, but they've, they've figured it out, right? Again, I've said this a million times. You know, we're just building cars. 
we're, we're not we're not performing any kind of crazy you know art surgery yeah we're building cars like right. it, it, you can do it <laughs> absolutely hey so um you know let's have some fun let's talk about something um that i've noticed about you you're uh, really good at shredding tires yeah now i've talked about your builds they're clean they're elegant but they're high performance vehicles Typically, your stuff is about 750 or 1,000 horsepower, somewhere sure. in there. Yep. So I've seen uh, I've seen your cars shred rubber off the tires. It seems like you're an, uh, very adept at that. So I, one of the things that it, I want to know is how the hell do you get so good where you know exactly where you are and you don't crash into somebody else's car or another building? Because I've seen you do like tight little loops. Yeah. And when I see it happening, I'm like, I don't see how the hell you. How do you see anything in this <laughs> smoke ball, you know? Um, so do you just, is this just practice and you're getting good at this or, or is this like a drifter? When I see a drifter, I'm like, how in that? It started with Motor Trend. Um, all of our suspension stories would start off with baselining the car with stock suspension. Okay. Um, but in order to do any kind of driving, we, I went to school first. I did Bonnerant racing school. Right. Um, they taught They've me been a around ton. A yeah. And then, we were at Fontana weekly testing cars um, and their Super Chevy Challenge. We'd bring out every guy from the Art Morrison to Detroit Speed uh, to TCI, um, CBP, and I would have to drive every one of their cars back then because of liability. So I was hopping from car to car to car at Willow Springs or El Toro, racing the car and then hopping in another car, racing the car for best times. Um, and thank God, finally, we were able to let them get their own drivers because that's, it's not fun hopping from car to car. You can't get good at one car yeah. when you're hopping from car to car. But yeah, it's just been experience and behind the wheel uh, driving. Knowing what a car is going to do. Yeah, yeah, and I, I mean, seat time. Every week to Wicked, I, I, whether it be Continental Falcon, um, whoever is our tire sponsor, you know, they're not my tires. That's not my engine. It's not my car. And I'm going to let it rip. <laughs> um, and Jim has been very, very good about, hey, you should do another one. Well, I just kill. I mean, you can't even still see because there's a, yeah. do another one. Um, so, so yeah. would you, if you did that twice, would you ruin a set of tires? Um, well, it's funny you say that I did two burnouts in the Nova and we need a set of tires. <laughs> um, but we I did use, that we too. use, we use Falcons, the newest state of the art, 200 tread wear, yeah. soft tire, yeah. um, that is street legal, but made to autocross. Yeah. It's a soft tire, uh, but two burnouts killed them. Yeah. And yeah, I've done, I did that on some other tires too. Yeah. It's I've watched some F1 racing this year and I'm just surprised when their tires start coming apart yeah. on those tracks. And I'm like, well, it's usually cause it's really hot outside and somebody's pushing it, you know, and yep. it was, it was fascinating to see those, the Mercedes team, uh, lose a couple of races or, you know, lose positions because their tires are falling apart. Sure. So tires are a pretty important part of everything that you're doing, but it's fun to see you destroy them. I absolutely love it. I think a lot of car knuckleheads like myself just can't wait to see people like you uh, shredding tires. Well, you know, a lot of it had to do when, when I did the Autotopia show down here, it, I asked Sean, who's got the biggest burnout? And I went and watched that because I wanted to make sure I beat it. And I, last time I talked to him at the last cruise, I still held the two biggest burnouts out here. The, no, the Nova, right? Um, the Nova and my F100. And the F100. The F100. No, I did not see the F100. Was that out on the main street or was it no, right No, that here? was on the same, same oh, place. Um, okay. In fact, the burnout marks were there when oh. I came back to do the Nova oh, still. Okay, that was you too. That was oh, me yeah. too. All right. So. Um, but the, the, the truck would have been much further. Um, I think the, the Holly ECU detected rev limiter being hit so many times yeah. that it went Shut into a up. limp mode. Yeah where I made sure I stayed off that rev limiter a lot more in the Nova to continue the burnout. Okay. And I went as far as I could with the Nova. Um, I still have a set of tires on uh, standby because I got to replace those yeah. next too. I think Corey was holding his own the other day and lunch money. Yeah. Uh, I saw, you know, that. I but, saw the preview of it. But I don't know if he made your record. We'll have to check into that, but I kind of doubt it. But that that's kind of a monster too. But Sean still owes me a hat and a shirt too, by the way, for holding that record. So I better get that before someone breaks it. And someone's already broken it. And, you know, I'm going to say nice things about our good friends at Autotopia LA. They've been great to us, filming down here, shouting out a lot for us. So you better take care of the Jason on that <laughs> merch, guys. That's for sure. Hey, um, are you working on a build right now? I mean, all car guys have something up their sleeve. There's something going on. Is there something you can share with us or you got one in your mind? Honestly, the F100 in the white truck behind me, I, I wrapped up about the same time uh, in the last four months. Okay. So I'm taking personally a little bit of time off building. Yeah. Um, I'm always doing something. I mean, I, 
I just actually worked on the 67 week to wicked Nova over at CBP because Jim owns that car um, the other day. And uh, I'm working on actually I'm working on a, the second gen orange Camaro we did on week to wicked um, the other day also. So There's I work on cars every day and I, I have a ton of, I, yeah. I, we are backed up. Yeah. I, I had a ton of stuff in our need to do and then working alongside with the magazine. So I'm busy, but yeah, I, I am looking forward. Well, I need us, something in my mind to look forward to. And yeah. that's one thing I do. Well, keep us posted when you yeah. get, get working on one, we'd like to, kind of gain some insight and maybe we come to you and do one of these podcasts cool. and you know see how it's done yeah you know? that'd be awesome it's so exciting so um the one story that i think is the best is that you built that 63 nova for your wonderful wife randy we met her she's super she's not just um you know a pretty wonderful wife she's a, a real serious driver um she gets out there and flogs it with the best of them but what a cool story that you kind of collaborated on that and built it for her, and now it's her thing, and yep. she actually drives it. So tell us just briefly that story. Um, the car was a hot rod magazine project, and the editor at the time got every piece of sheet metal for that car because that car was a wreck. What, I wouldn't have saved it. Um, it was too far gone. Uh, long story short, advertisers were ready to pull ads because the sheet metal sat there for over a year, never got any love, and I was asked, hey, you don't have to shoot metal on my car. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> I don't want that Take car. Take it out. Cut um, it Again, it's my wife's dream car. It's a first-gen uh, Nova. Uh, I took the car, got the car for free, brought it up to Arizona, my buddy's shop, and Justin and his team just destroyed it. I mean, cut all the sheet metal out. We welded everything back on, got that thing in rough body work. Some epoxy primer brought it back, and that's where it started at Motor Trend with that car and a solid, you know, a solid foundation. And Schwartz gave me a full chassis, so it's a full chassis car, no longer a subframe car, and that's the direction I went. Once I got that chassis, I knew I had to do the best of the best, bare brakes, full flowing rear end, L, blown LS. Um, LSX, right? LSX B8, yep. uh, or B15 actually. Um, so it's a blower box straight from GM, and uh, made 668 to the rear wheels on like six pounds of boost, maybe seven pounds, but nothing. That thing's capable of holding 20 pounds. We could turn the power up on that thing and make all kinds of power. But she drives out on the street and she's getting better. She was nervous, but she's, she's definitely getting better. I take her out every now and then to do some social media stuff and just bring the RPMs a little more, a little yeah. more on a safe street. Um, and she's getting better at it. Yeah. So she what loves that car. Well, we love the story. We love her as well. So thanks for bringing us up to speed on that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, you know, last thing is, um, what what's next for you? I mean, you know, you don't have a car in the works, but are you um, absolutely going to be expanding uh, into some other areas, or you get, or is your plate full? Do you have enough plates spinning? You know what I mean? Like, um, my plate is full with CBP and the magazines, but we are both sides, CBP and the magazines. We're going to start doing another. We're probably going to do another show. Okay. That I'll host um, and build and. Yeah, awesome. so we're, we're, we're not leaving anything behind. We're doing okay. everything I, I was doing before, um, just with some other people. And okay. I'm happy to say that, you know, I, I'm really happy where I'm at again. And okay. Sounds like Not it. that I wasn't happy before. It just was time for time change. Time for a change. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, we're, we're definitely going to stay in that video doing, you know, shows and doing print and everything in between. Well, we can't wait to see it. So how do people get in touch with you? How do they learn more about quarantine cruises or cruise and PCH yeah. with it? Um, personally, Q. Week to Week Jason. Um, with the two, so week to week adjacent on my Instagram and uh, cruising PCH on Instagram with a Q. Yeah, reach out for either one. Um, CPP, then classicperform.com. Uh, they have Instagram also, Classic Perform, and then in the or in the garage media. Um, go check out the magazines. Go follow their uh, Instagram pages. Uh, there, there's gonna be a lot of really neat things happening in the future, especially at the beginning of the year with with the three publications. And I, I don't miss out. You, you guys are, if, if you think print's dead, it's not print's well alive. Just open it up. You'll see the, the high quality features, the tech stories, the advertising. Um, it, it, it's a great thing. Well, I'll tell you what, thanks so much, Jason. That was awesome. Uh, we, we just can't thank you enough for making the time today. It's Absolutely. a little warm today, but we're so excited to have you and your truck here, um, you know, just representing all that you do. And what a great story. So. Um, and for those of you watching today, don't forget all of our episodes are out there, as we mentioned earlier, on our YouTube channel. So you got to get out there and subscribe. So you make sure you see all of our guests like Jason. They're all awesome. Uh, they may not all be as awesome as Jason. But, <laughs> please. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. Though. But anyway, but please watch, follow, and most importantly, subscribe. That's the most important thing.
so you never miss an episode. And if you prefer to listen to these episodes, please go to all your favorite podcast platforms, Apple iTunes, Stitcher, Buzzsprout, Google Play, and the SoCal Car Storage forward slash media page. Thank you so much for listening and watching, and we appreciate you. And Jason, thank you once again. No, thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you.